clearly a lot of enthusiasm for shares in these uh, in these tech companies. Uh, and let's let's further the discussion here because you know it's always good to look back at where some of these companies started. Airbnb back in 08 as an idea among a couple friends to make rent by starting a bed and breakfast uh, with an air bed. Just a little on the uh, a little side idea here to bring in a little extra cash. Finally debuting on the Nasdaq. And let's bring in uh, one of those co- uh, the co-founders here, uh, Nate Blacharzik. It's not just a co-founder of Airbnb, but also chief strategy officer. He joins us now alongside Yahoo Finance's Dan Roberts. And uh, and Nate, first off, congratulations in order here, man. As I said, more than a decade in the making for the moment. And earlier this year, a lot of people were saying, look, this might not be possible with the pandemic. You guys saw revenues fall nearly 75 percent in the second quarter. Uh, But for you personally, uh, what does it feel like to bring the company across the finish line now, having been through all of that? Well, well, thank you. Um, It's absolutely surreal. Um, You know, as you mentioned, this has been an incredibly difficult year for the world and for travel and tourism. And we never have expected at the start of this year, back in the spring, that, you know, we'd be ending the year uh, this way. And and then I look back over the last 13 years and it's been an incredible journey because uh, in those early years, especially, you know, so many people thought we were crazy. This idea of, you know, opening your home up to to strangers. Um, And it's been an amazing uh, journey to see this uh, concept spread around the world um, and become so mainstream. Nate, Dan Roberts here. Thanks for joining us. Uh, It's been so interesting to see the shift that you guys have noted uh, in customer behavior in terms of booking stays much closer to home, drivable stays, and for longer periods of time, thanks to remote work. I mean, that really helped you guys bounce back, get a profitable quarter in Q3. Uh, I guess I'd ask, as we look forward to the end of the pandemic, whenever that is, you know, even once a vaccine begins to be distributed, a lot of consumer behaviors might be changed forever. And I'd ask you, if the new normal is shorter stays and people avoiding uh, air travel, is that a problem for you guys moving forward for the business? Well, I think this year has highlighted the adaptability um, of the model because uh, indeed, you know, people have more or less stopped flying, going very far. Um, but, you know, people have a fundamental need uh, to connect and I think a desire to travel. And we certainly uh, saw that for the second half of this year, uh, people getting out and, and getting in their cars and, and traveling a shorter distance and staying nearby and using uh, Airbnb to do that. Um, you know, as for the future, it's, it's difficult to predict, but what I'm confident is that you know, Airbnb can adapt to whatever consumer demand is. Um, You know, I do think there will be a vaccine at some point, and I do think at some point folks will get back on airplanes. Um, But whether they're staying near or going far, um, you know, Airbnb will be there for them to help them uh, connect and and have a great stay. And and Nate, it was also really interesting to see in that S1 filing, uh, the slashing of the marketing budget. You know, you guys ended up cutting your marketing costs in half in the first nine months of 2020 versus the first nine months of 2019. And it's interesting, it sure looks like everything was fine in the sense that maybe this is now a brand that really doesn't need to do much brand marketing, that the name has become ubiquitous. You know, having lived in New York, I remember a time in Airbnb's early days when the subway for a while was plastered in Airbnb ads. You're far past that now, you don't need to do that. Well, I think the fundamental reason um, for the strength of our brand is the fact that our product is so so unique and differentiated. You know, most of our hosts, most of our homes, they weren't available before Airbnb. We've created a platform that empowers people to participate in the global industry of, of tourism. So many people are doing this for the first time. Um, for the most part, they're only on Airbnb. Um, and because our product is so different um, and allows people to, to travel uh, and connect uh, so authentically, uh, it creates a lot of a lot of word of mouth, a lot of buzz, and it strengthens the brand. So that's why I think we're doing so well, despite having spent um, almost no money on marketing this year. Nate, when you think about Airbnb's uh, strategy, what you were building up pre-pandemic, it did feel like you were really going for the entire travel stack here. You had the home sharing, you had the experiences, also rumors of you getting into flights as well. Uh, the pandemic has kind of forced you to sort of pivot a little. And I wonder if the ultimate goal here is to be end to end when it comes to travel, or is that sort of put on hold because of the shift in demand you're seeing right now? Well, I do think long term, that is our ambition to facilitate the end to end trip and and really enhance it. Um, You know, that being said, this year has um, required us to to focus more um, because this spring was incredibly hard. We did take a big hit when our revenues fell and we had to do um, a layoff. And so as part of that, we really uh, needed to reprioritize. And we said, let's double down on on what truly makes Airbnb unique and our, our core strengths. And that is empowering uh, ordinary people uh, to participate as hosts. 
um, and to you know, help folks travel in the way that they want to travel right now, which right now is nearby stays. So that's been our focus uh, you know, for the second half of this year, and I think that will continue uh, into next. Uh, you have seen incredible growth outside of the U.S., international amounting to more than 80 percent of your business now. China, one of those markets that you have focused on, and that's what makes Airbnb a little unique in that as a tech company, you have tried to go head on on China. Uh, and yet you face a lot of pushback naturally, as any company does operating in China. And I have to wonder, does the opportunity outweigh the risk here in China when you talk about the data localization concerns that a lot of people have raised as it relates to the Chinese market having to comply with local regulations. Is that a risk that, that you're willing to put aside in order to, to go for the opportunity there? Or, or do you anticipate further headwinds? Well, travel is inherently global. And our mission is to create a world where you can belong anywhere. And China represents 20% of the world's population. Um, and so I think it's incredibly important for us to uh, you know, build something that's inclusive of China. Uh, in terms of the challenges, you know, we operate no differently than uh, how you know, Marriott or Hilton or other multinational companies uh, have to operate uh, in China. Um, and so you know, I, I, think, I think this is uh, important to, to keep working on. Yeah, Nate, just to piggyback off that, I mean, you, you might not be different in terms of those hotel operators, but it does seem to be an issue, at least internally here. We've been talking to a lot of companies that are, that are looking to expand uh, or not expand, rather, and just choose to not work in China. We heard it from Palantir. We heard it yesterday from C3AI. Tom Siebel telling us he didn't want to do it. Uh, in your guys' S1, you know that those risks uh, you know, come and they could have you uh, pull back in terms of your efforts on China. I know you lead Airbnb's operations in China. Uh, the Wall Street Journal had you quoted in an internal spat there after an exec uh, chose to resign over some of those issues. And you said, we're not here to promote American values. Uh, what did you mean by that? And, and how tenuous is the growth prospects in China? Well, I'm not going to uh, comment on, on, on rumors of what was said. But, um, you know, again, I think we have made sure that we align our operating processes with how Hilton and Marriott and others operate. And um, we've always uh, been very transparent. You can go to our website and, and learn all about exactly um, our practices. Um, and it's part of uh, the booking flow. Um, and we've done uh, uh, quite a lot to protect user data. Um, you know, any data uh, that isn't directly relevant to a stay in China uh, does not reside in China. Um, so um, we've made sure that uh, this doesn't impact uh, our broader business. Uh, this is only relevant to trips uh, actually taking place in China. Well, if you're if you're facing that and hotels are facing that, there is one area where you are different than hotels, and we saw that kind of uh, in the importance of your guys' Q3 numbers and bounce back. Uh, Edison Trends is kind of highlighting the fact that you guys had seen a much stronger bounce back in terms of travel uh, and bookings compared to some of those more traditional hotel chain operators. And I wonder how much of that in your mind is tied to uh, the risks associated with traveling during the pandemic, our family included, uh, going to be staying in an Airbnb over Christmas instead of hotels due to some of those concerns. Uh, talk Talk to me about that and, and what it's maybe signals uh, beyond the pandemic when travel resumes back to normal uh, and how you see that going in your mind. Yeah, well, I think two things. One is, you know, people right now are hesitant to get on airplanes, but they still want to get out and travel. So they've been traveling nearby. Uh, and Airbnb has homes in over 100,000 cities and towns around the globe, including in rural areas. So I think we are well suited to help people stay nearby in rural areas. Um, you know, second, as you mentioned, folks are very conscious about health safety, um, about maintaining social distance. And so there's a hesitancy about being around other people. Uh, they, they don't necessarily want to be um, in a hotel lobby or in a restaurant. Um, they're cautious. And so uh, we see people uh, opting to have an entire home to themselves right now, being able to cook their own food in a kitchen uh, and, you know, be with family who's within their, their, their kind of uh, their, their bubble. Um, what does this mean for the future? You know, it's hard to predict. There certainly will be a vaccine next year. Um, and eventually, um, you know, travel um, will get back closer to normal. Um, but it, it will probably take some time. I think no matter what's to come, you know, Airbnb is adaptable. Um, the other trend I would comment on is just this, this work from home trend. Um, you know, I think that will linger. I think uh, because of Zoom, people don't necessarily, not everybody has to go into the office five days a week. What I think that allows for is folks uh, traveling, taking uh, you know, long weekend kind of trips uh, more frequently. 
Um, they might be getting on airplanes to do so. They might be traveling nearby uh, to, to do so. So I think that's an interesting trend for the for everybody in travel to watch. Nate, it's Dan here again. You know, we keep hitting and talking about this Q3 comeback that the business had because it's so interesting, especially as it relates to uh, consumer behavior. But what critics say is, well, it was really helped by dramatic cost cutting. And as we mentioned, uh, having to slash 25% of the workforce, very painful. You know, once the stock starts listing today, and as we see, uh, no doubt, big gains on day one, it's going to be hard to watch for those 25% of employees who were cut. As we look forward and as the business starts to grow again, I mean, do you anticipate being able to uh, start ramping up hiring again? And what might you say to those people who were cut from the company right before the IPO? Well, look, I, I really do hope that uh, the world can get back uh, to uh, back closer to, to normal pre-pandemic. Um, you know, hopefully that'll come sooner rather than later. Um, you know, I'm, I'm very um, uh, bullish on the future of, of the company um, and, and hope we can continue to, to grow. Um, we made very clear during those layoffs, which were incredibly difficult for us. We're a very close knit company um, and everyone is very passionate uh, about the mission. So it's very hard to see them go. We, we always made clear that, you know, we would welcome them back uh, when the opportunity arises. So again, it's, it's difficult to predict the specifics, um, but you know, these were very good people uh, who uh, were very passionate about the company and hopefully some of them can come back. Nate Blacharsik, uh, the co-founder of Airbnb. It's great to have you on on this day and I really appreciate your time. Thank you.